Hello and welcome everybody, I am Unfrapa Varian and today we're going to depart on a beautiful journey together because what you can see right here is none other than Manalords, which is probably for many of you the most anticipated game 2024. It will go into early access at the end of April, but I have the pleasure to already play it right here. Hooded Horse, the publisher of this game, have given me an early copy so that I can go check it out and do that exactly in front of all of you right here. Now let me tell you right now, this will not be a one-off. This will not be me just running through everything, showing it to you in a fairly quick manner. No, this will be the opposite. Over the next few days, maybe one week or maybe two weeks, who the hell knows how long it will take, we're going to build our own settlement. We are going to pour our love into it and try to design it in an incredibly authentic way. Because, well, when it comes to villages, I gotta tell you, I absolutely adore them. Most people that live in, for example, any European village don't really know this, but one village can be very different from any other given village. Just because, you know, depending on where it was built, when it was built, who built it, why they built it, and so on. I want to explore exactly what that looked like here in these videos. We're going to jump in, we're going to do the best to make our population happy, and hopefully not lose, because we are going to have an AI enemy in front of us as well. But without further ado, we're going to take it slow and we're going to hop right in. Folks, here we are. This is where we're going to build. Let's just pause the game. Uh, I have a bit of a preamble, of course, as it is with these type of videos. This will be a long, long and slow paced series so that we can really take in the flair, the vibe and the authenticity of this game. But let's just start after we have examined, who, who do you have your homeless people's tents, right? We got Peter, we got Albrecht, we got Linhardt, uh, what's this? Toman is our ox, Toman, our very, very good ox, is going to work for us after we read this message right here. Victory condition of this map is dominance. Build up your town, your manor, and when ready, press claims towards regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. I will unite these lands under my rule. And that brings us to exactly what we're about to do and embark on when it comes to our journey here in this playthrough. If we zoom out, we can see the beautiful, beautiful map here and it is considerably bigger than what you would experience in the demo. What was it? The Steam Next Fest or was it like the Steam Winter Fest? I don't remember. Anyway, this means that I can spread myself around this map. I can take over new areas. I can specialize them. I can hopefully build them up and not get raided. But of course, we now also have a competitor. It is this man right here, Hildebold von Bärenneuter. He is supposedly not really the rightful lord of these lands and we want to clarify that for him. We are going to try to take him out. Uh, he will not actually build anything on the map, just for the record. As it stands, he is just off map. He will bring in troops, you know, from wherever he lives and we will have to fight him. Ultimately, of course, the goal here is that we take over everything. I don't know whether we are about to do this. Um, I set everything to normal. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, I hope that I'm good enough to do it. I already did. You know, I, I put in a couple of hours here just to learn the game, just to really remember what it was like to play this uh, back when the demo was out. And I had a great time. So yeah, anyway, without further ado, what is the goal of this playthrough? I, in the last week, I basically just took a really long look at the different types of villages that we have in Germany and in Europe in particular. And man, I really love doing this because there are so many different village variations. You know what, let's hop into the third person view right here. Uh, if you are not familiar with Manor Lords at all, then yeah, Manor Lords goes quite a bit further than most other city builders. We can just walk around in it. Anyway, my point being, I discovered that there are so many different variety forms of villages, depending on where they were built, when they were built, who built them, and of course for what purpose. And I kind of want to dive into this a little bit. Maybe if you grew up in Europe or anywhere else in the world really, you might have thought, well, rural life is rural life, it's the same everywhere. And that's just really not true. Things always were growing differently. Things were designed differently. Yep, even if we don't really think about that too much. Very, very often in the Middle Ages, when people were colonizing, when people were going into new territory and wanted to take it over, they were essentially doing this with a plan already in mind. And I want to bring those villages and those plans closer to you here in this series. We're going to build a couple of historical villages. Now that means that these videos will be long form, they will be quieter, they will have more explanations and more considerations. And especially if you are in the comments, you can also, you know, leave some input for what you would like me to place where, why and so on and so forth. We're going to build our very own authentic medieval world right here. 
Now, for starters, uh, let's just take a look around us, right? The only thing that you want to do when you go anywhere new, and this was very much was what drove the medieval kind of thought process behind this stuff, is you need to learn what even is going on in these lands. What is good and what is bad. Emma, so our weed, wow, actually grows everywhere. It seems to me as though this region may very well become basically just our weed central. We produce Emma, we produce our bread right here, and then we can ship it into new regions if they are, yeah, much less fertile. Uh, when we take a look at flax, okay, looking pretty okay. We can see that we can rotate what is going on there for sure. We see a weak spot right here, which is great for me. We're gonna get to that in just a second. Barley, oh, I wish barley was not that great here, but okay, we can basically grow it anywhere as well and rye yet again. Wow, I mean, this area is just amazing. I'll be honest with you, um, more often than not, that is not the luck that you will have if you... You know, just take a look. Yeah, these are horrendous locations. We got very, very lucky here, which also makes sense. If you're settling new land, and for example, this is very true when it comes to the Germans and the Ostsiedlung. So this is a pattern where we moved from the core German areas into what is modern-day Saxony, Brandenburg, mecklenburg vorpommern and so on and so forth. That was primarily done because there was prosperous land to be gained. Obviously, it uh, wasn't always easy, and obviously there already were people there. We have, for example, even today still the Sorbs, we had the Polabians, and so on and so forth. But everything that was being considered was first and foremost, can it be something that will make me wealthy? Now, speaking of the Ostsiedlung, this will be our very, very first village. The Ostsiedlung was a very, very long process, it had different periods, and it was a rather interesting process that even today we don't know that much about. You know, the way this was handled is, of course, that the Christians, that the Germans came in, they went into the Slavic pagan territories and they started to take them over, sometimes with violence, sometimes not with violence, and we don't really know when they did this or that because we have very, very few sources about it. What we do know is, though, that there was a very peculiar city planning style and we're going to explore this right here. Let me set this road to have a bit of a greater curve if I take a look at this. Uh, we don't really quite have like city skylines level tools here, but they are pretty good. I'm going to move this path through these, uh, through this valley here essentially, and then into this direction. I think we're going to stop exactly here. That is gorgeous. You're kind of coming in around this bend, and then we're going to come to where the city will be. This right here is a valley. You can see it in the sort of curvature lines right there. And in this valley, we are going to create a circle village. Um, I hope fully can... You know what, I want to slightly adjust this. Like I said, we don't quite have City Skylines tools here, but I'm going to do my best. Um, I'm going to make this relatively big. Yeah, I like this. Okay, this is perfectly fine. Right around this tiny little set of trees right there. And we're going to put down this path. And this right here, whether you like the look of it or not, and I hope I didn't actually create this circle too big, uh, they might also actually be much, much smaller in real life, but I'm going to make it relatively big so that I can put a lot of, a lot of plots around it. But this right here was a completely historical design. It is called the Rundling, and it can be found exactly in those territories of the Ostsiedlung, specifically in just one particular corridor. I'm going to mark this on a map, hopefully, if I don't forget. And this is an incredibly fascinating element of city building and village building in that area because, well, we don't really know exactly what was going on with these. Let's take a look at this in first person as well. Yeah, okay, maybe I make this a bit too big, huh? Is this road, you, you think this is passable? It's, it's probably passable. I'm going to put a lot of stuff in there. We're, we're going to make this work. Anyway, the point of these settlements is that originally we assumed that this was, well, the original Slavic settlement from before the Germans would settle. But that doesn't really seem to be true. The newest level when it comes to the historian's, you know, uh, consensus there is that these settlements were basically created by the Germans for the Slavic inhabitants. There are some peculiar issues there, and we don't really know. Were these Slavs forced into the settlements? Was it voluntary? Who did really do the impulse work there? We do know that the plans were basically created by the Germans. But anyway, the idea is we don't know too much about them, but we know exactly how they are designed and what went on inside of them. So that is exactly what we're going to do here today. Now, as we start designing this, there are some oddities around this. We have this location right here, and in a very typical manner for the medieval period, this will be a green space that essentially belongs to everybody. They really love doing that. They love the idea we have some common space. We can, for example, hold court here. We can have festivities. We can do whatever is important and really is something that, you know, uh, belongs to the entire community. 
And then we're going to just start building houses around this location. Oh, and there it just uh, finished saving. That's fine. Let me check, by the way. Oh, no, the water. It's so far away. Okay, that's fine. Our, our well will be very, very far away. Uh, well, it is what it is. Anyway, I'm going to place that up there. That's fine. Now, when it comes to placing houses, though, um, this was basically done in a bit of a different fashion. Normally, in a village, you would have houses, for example, just one long road, but that was not the case in this one. In this one, they would always border just this circle. So this is quite literally why it is called Rundling, so Roundling. And as you can see, we're going to place this down. What I'm going to do here as well, I'm not going to build them too tightly. This means that I can basically make space in this location. And let me just pause the game for not just one family on this plot, but for two families. So we can basically just, you know, have a bit of a nicer, a bit of a wider building style right here. We also got a new message. I've heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders that some may spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal, Hildebord von Berenoit. All right, this is our competitor. We can write back, although this does not seem to be fully finished. Look at that. Neat silver. War surprise. I'm not going to declare a war against you. He looks, uh, yeah, okay, not very friendly. Anyway, I will say you have no rightful claim to Selbitz and Hofstetten, which are the two territories that he currently holds. This is just rhetorical. I don't think it, it's going to matter at all. But I'm going to insult him. Sure, why wouldn't I, right? Uh, these should be my territories after all. Anyway, with that being said, let's actually place this down right here. I need to redraw this. There you go. Uh, the way they did this historically is they didn't actually even, like, start just building around this and, you know, start it there. No, they would place a couple of buildings right there, a few buildings there. And over time, this would just grow into each other. In general, there would only ever be one location where you can enter from. And maybe later, at a very, very much later point in history, there would, you know, maybe be one additional uh, slot of a street going in right there. Anyway, we're going to build this and we're obviously going to have to take care of our basic needs. In this case... Let me just check the ammo fertility and all that stuff again. Yeah, I want this forest to go away. Once we get rid of this forest, we have great territory where we can put fields. And that is ultimately the goal right there. Right, uh, we're going to go ahead and put a logging camp right here so that they can get working. I'm also going to put a woodcutter's lodge right there. The logging camp creates timber that we can use for building. And then the uh, woodcutter's lodge does firewood, which we will obviously need for the winter. Now, Forester's Hut wouldn't be bad right now, but we don't actually need it because we want to get rid of this. We don't want this replanted. Other than that, obviously, I have to move towards, you know, hunting, towards gathering berries, that kind of stuff. Let's take a look at what is going on in our territory. Wow, um, the animals are very far away and they're not... Oh, there are not a ton of them either, huh? Interesting. That might mean that we want to go towards farming at least a little bit earlier than maybe I normally do. Let me check this, right? Man, you are so far away. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to go into this forest at least a little bit. We're going to place a really cute hunting camp right here where there are no trees. Uh, I think that is basically ideal visually speaking, but distance-wise it's it's absolutely awful. We <laughs> this is just our citizens will have to walk a lot, okay? They, they gotta stay a bit fit. Now, on the other hand, we do also need a forager hut, but let's just let that sit here for the time being. I don't have the resources. The most important part that we want to build here is this logging camp. Um, everything else has roughly equal importance. And that now means we can unpause and watch them go. A really big part of this game is that everything needs to be done in person. Now, I will say that, for example, if you've played Ostriff, they are so particular in Ostriff about exactly bringing nails, about, for example, pr uh, bringing clay and such, if you want to build particular buildings. This game isn't as demanding. Obviously, clay will be playing a big role for us as well. This was one of the huge elements in building houses in this period. However, to build a normal house, you just need wood. They keep it relatively simple. So that means we don't really need to do much else. This ox, Toman right here, my best friend, can bring the timber to where it is needed. In this case, the highest priority building, which is the logging camp. So we're going to build this and we will have to do it by physically bringing the goods where they need to be. Take a look at that. God, I love that. Oh, you're bringing this to this guy, huh? I guess I had not changed the priority yet. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, and I'm not really going to mention this in the future because it's just something for me, you watching this, you know, it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, only families that don't have proper jobs assigned will even be building in the first place. So everybody right now going to bring the timber there or, you know, to just stand around here to dig a couple of flat areas out and then, of course, build up 
the actual building. They will only do that if they are currently unassigned. We can see our total families if we add these two together. Right now, nobody is assigned to a proper job. Five families are unassigned and we have zero living space for them. This is, like I said, our priority for the time being. And there you go. The very first piece of timber has been delivered and they've started really putting up this logging camp right here. Obviously, they can't finish it, but they're doing their best. And just look at how much love went no, into this. Absolutely be over there. Oh, hello. All right. Just check this out. We can go inside as well. Not that you can do this, I think, with uh, most houses. I think very few actually let you go inside. But basically, they are going to start building it up. And they will do this with every last building. Because that is exactly how it went. I mean, you know, how else would it go? The Oxen will bring the second piece of timber. Can we... I wonder whether we can see him. No, he seems to be too far away right now. I, I can't spot him. Maybe you can see him. And once he brings the second piece of timber... They're going to finish this, and then they're going to start actually working here and making sure that indeed we will have a proper supply of wood going forward. Let's take a look at this. Yes, they are missing one piece of timber. The ox is right there picking up the second piece, marching over there, getting it done. I have, by the way, and this is entirely optional, turned on the day and night cycle. It's also just cosmetic. You can see the sun go down over there. We can turn that off. Not sure whether I'm going to do that. I kind of like seeing it, but just so you know, it doesn't have any impact on whatever is going on in the game. There are no day-night cycles. It's just something you can do if you feel like it. And now, as you can see, they're finishing it up. And once they do, we're going to assign a family here to cut down some wood. There you go. The logging camp has been finished bit by bit. And I'm going to say, you know what, let's get two families to work on this. The more families we have in the logging camp, obviously, the faster will they work. Now, it has to be said that the logging camp itself also preferably actually has an ox. The reason for this is that the ox is the one that will be pulling the, uh, you know, basically the trees back into the location so that we can then use them. Let's check this out. Take a look at them. Cutting down this... Oh, saving. There you go. Okay, that scared me. Cutting down this forest one tree at a time. Oh, timber. Beautiful. Would you look at that? Good job, fella. You're going to get a raise. That's a lie. This, this guy's never going to get a raise. Don't worry about it, okay? The way you assign people here, just for the record, is by family. Um, This is true for every building. Never does just one individual work anyway. It's always, always every single family member being involved there. Uh, they will later, depending on the building that they're in, potentially set up market stalls as well. This guy is currently debranching this piece of timber. Yeah, that's looking good. Look at you. Beautiful. God, it's such a good looking game. Honestly, I'm so impressed by the foliage. You know, everything just going on here, all the details. You can see again, we're not on the highest settings, but we're pretty damn close and it looks so, so gorgeous. Garden. This is where the hunting lodge will be, and this will be such a lonely place. Look at that. You cannot even see past these bushes. <laughs> they literally cannot see where they live. Their, their actual town is far, far away. Now, this, of course, wasn't actually, you know, all that weird uh, quite often, and in particular in this Rundling design. Where you lived and where you worked could be two very, very different spaces. Uh, in many city, many town designs, you basically were looking at a situation where your fields were very close by. In the Rundling, that wasn't really the case. Not even the church was actually in the center of the Rundling. The church was uh, off elsewhere. I really like the look. Oh, hello. I really like the look of, the of this forest, you know that? But yeah, basically what I'm saying is making this long a journey... Not ideal, and maybe I'm going to change this sooner rather than later, that the hunting camp can live nearby, something like this. They get their own little piece of uh, piece of land, but as it stands, yeah, this is going to be a real journey. Look at this. We just, like, walk to, I think, right here, and oh my god, the city is all the way over here. Yeah, that's, that's gonna take you a while to get to work, pal. And the next thing finished right here, like I said, is the firewood production site absolutely beautiful look at that they have a tiny little area where they can live essentially while they are working while they're cutting the wood in the forest i wish i had first person even i live here now <laughs> this is my living space now but anyway yeah we've built this building now 
And with that, we are pretty good. If you're just starting out, if you just start playing this game, I would recommend focusing on the logging camp very heavily because the more timber you're producing, the more can you then actually expand your town very, very rapidly. It's a really important thing to do so that you can have enough population once the first winter is over, you know, so that you can then actually go on and earn some money that you can farm and so on. I gotta, I gotta hire, uh, put this on a higher prior here, I think. The hunting camp doesn't even seem to need any goods. Am I blind? Ah, doesn't seem to need any goods whatsoever. But we definitely need it built as soon as possible so that we can get some, some food. I would prefer not starving. With as few people as we have, of course, that's not really that big a concern. Right now, our food lasts for three months and there is no fuel consumption. We gotta build this berry deposit here as well. Now that we've built the logging camp, uh, I'm sure that I can build a forager. Yeah, there it is. A forager hut. I think I'm gonna put this really close. And then, of course, the again, like I said, the only road into the actual town will be this one. Which means I cannot connect this, like, cheekily in there. We're not, we're not gonna do this. We're going to instead, I think, lead it along this location. I have some plans with this hill right here and then feed it into the location right here. Like I said, we're going to try to build, uh, you know, a historical town, or rather a historical village as close as we can. Anyway, let's let them continue building. Oh, check out this little fella. Who is he? Is he one of ours? I don't think he is. I think he is just a traveling merchant, or maybe just a general wanderer. Maybe he is a future bandit that we will have to kill. Ah, go. Go with God, my friend, and don't come back to try and steal my wealth. My God, the bandits in this game, they can be devastating, but look at that. Oh, I love the way this looks. Already we have this beautiful sight and another traveler. How many travelers are there? We have a starting camp over there. We don't even see our city from here because it is behind the hills, which is, of course, beautiful. Makes us thought we are a bit more protected. And down goes that tree. This is just, it's so cute. All right, and now as for additional housing, like I said, we want uh, to have a total of five, at least for starters. Obviously, we want way more so that more people can move in. We're going to fill out this valley, and I'm going to push this roughly to where the tree line is. Uh, historically speaking, sometimes in your backyard, you had trees so that you could cut them down as your very own firewood. That's not actually possible in this game, but we can basically put it just right up to this... Uh, Wow, that would be a bit of a waste here, I feel. We could put it right up to this tree line, making it so that they should have enough space here. And look at that, we have a wide backyard, and here's still space for this additional plot on the plot. So we're going to put this down, we're going to leave a space here, we will fill it out as we go, of course. And you know what, I think our last pieces of housing here are going to go roughly here, and they're going to go pretty far back, yeah. Why not? It does actually matter. Uh, we can eventually give them some stuff to do in their backyards. And the bigger the backyard is, the better will that be. The more will they actually be able to basically create out of thin air there. Now, as it stands, that will be enough for our base village right here. Uh, we're actually going to get more living space. And technically, all of these can get one plus. So that means we have not just six. We actually have 12 upcoming living spaces. And that is going to be the starting town, I think. Uh, you can see we are getting pop-ups every now and again. For example, new mercenary company available. Doesn't really mean anything to us yet. Don't worry about it too much. Warfare will come our way soon enough. Oh, and check this out. They've built a beautiful well as well. I really wish we could build this much, much closer to the actual housing. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, sometimes you got to walk. In fact, sometimes you got to walk just to get water. I wish I could fall in there. It would be so funny. All right, anyway. Oh, and look who is coming along. They're rushing in to finally finish up the hunting camp one shovel at a time. This guy is just supervising. Classic foreman right there. He might actually make it to be a lord, you know, honestly. He just shows up, looks at things. Oh, and because it is raining, we now lost some stocks. We lost some supplies. That is to be expected. You can't really avoid it. At the very start of the game, we don't have a storehouse. We don't have any of that sort. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, we're going to build a storehouse, I think, before long. And we might actually, I'm not sure, we might actually build this here in the center. The storehouse, to a certain degree, I would argue, is essentially a communal building, right? So having it here in the communal space kind of makes sense. Although, well, we're producing everything up here, it's probably going to be in a better spot up here. I'll think about it. 
Yeah, let me actually double check, right? What is our fertility looking like? I think, unless there's a very special... Ooh, I mean, barley is great here, but we're not going to use that as a field. We're going to put the barley over there, I think. Um, I think I'm going to put the granary right around here, maybe, and then the storehouse a bit further down in this general location. Th this, this looks pretty okay to me. Um, the granary, I'm going to put it up entirely... Because, well, the way this goes is we're going to have fields in this area and so on. We're going to have maybe a mill. And the granary being here should allow us to store stuff very, very easily without going too many paths. Obviously, that is going to be a concern, much like it was historical. But hey, this is a city builder game. So primarily, you want to shorten the paths. And, and let's be honest here, I've not done my citizens any favors. They, they struggle. They have to walk a lot, okay? So if I can shorten some paths here, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, we're getting now more damage to our supplies. Um, the sooner we build these buildings, and the sooner we can then build, of course, the granaries and so on, the happier will I be. The biggest thing here, essentially, for me is that I want these houses up as soon as I can so that we can get some migration. That's, yeah, that's pretty significant. The sooner you can grow here, the sooner more settlers can come, the better will it be for your overall existence. What are you doing, fight? You're not doing anything? Uh, oh, and I could upgrade this to a worker camp, huh? Provides crude living space for five families. Contrary to burgage plots, can't be upgraded or expanded and may cause a small loss of approval. Best suited as worker accommodation for outposts. Oh. So if we ever expand past this point, I'm not going to bother doing it now, I think, but if we ever expand past this point, I can just put down a worker accommodation instead of building a town. I mean, long term, I definitely want to put down a town, but... Yeah, interesting stuff. Look at this old windmill here. Destroyed windmill, disabled. We are now, similarly to what we've done with the hunting and the wood gathering, going to build, a, you know, a small camp here so that they can actually get these, uh, these stones. Getting stone is going to be a big next step. We're already getting timber. We're getting some food. And then with this stone, we can actually start building stuff. Uh, I think the granary and the storehouse may actually need the stone. Not that we actually have to produce it ourselves. I think we start with some stone. Right, we have these cliffs. And then in this direction, behind the tree line, that is where actual settlements are. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Uh, we are pretty damn spread out. But that is just how these maps work. It will all grow together in due time. Oh, and while I was looking at the stone, we have missed the very first burgage plot. Take a look at that. Isn't it cute? You see that they have a pretty, pretty long way into the distance here for their backyard. Just look at them. It's so, it's so cute. And as they're building this then, of course, the backyard will not initially be used for anything. But since we have it, it means I can designate it long term as, you know, some kind of usage plot. Oh, and look at that. There goes the fence. God, that is so cute. We're so far away, actually, from the tree line. We got our own little tree right here, and then past that, we just have uh, probably where the heathens live, huh? That's where you don't want to go at night. That's where the village is set. And just like that, we have finished our second burgage plot. Now, when we take a look at this interface, it's important to understand that this essentially shows us just how happy this family is. If you've ever played Anno, then you will know this interface. This essentially says they need a church. They got water access, they're very happy about that, and they would like to purchase certain things. And to purchase things, we need a market. I will, of course, set that up. Now, what we can also do here is we can expand the living space. This living space would make it so that the family count on this burgage plot can be doubled. And like I said, that is really what I would like to do. That is exactly why I've set up the burgage plots. Let me actually showcase, uh, showcase that here. If you're going into building a burgage plot, you can either follow the suggestion right here, and as you see, first of all, this would be extraordinarily ugly. But second of all, this would also mean you can't expand the plots at all. If you go down to two, though, this symbol right there will mean we can have a second family move in. So you can either build four very small houses or two big houses that ultimately house the same amount of people. Uh, I'm going to actually upgrade this one immediately. We're going to upgrade the living space right there. Just so that indeed we'll then have enough space for more families to move in. And let me double check this, right? We're finishing up these. Did we already deliver the wood here? Only one timber, but it is progressing very, very nicely. Let me actually check this. How far back does this yard go? Yeah, look at that. It goes immediately into the tree line. This will be so good. I think I want to make this into like a, a vegetable field. 
then this family will be growing their own vegetables, bringing them to the market, helping the entire town. But more on that, of course, in the distant, distant future. And there they go. Family requests more market area for their stall. Like I said, these families want to purchase these goods, and that means we have to set up a marketplace. Um, we could put up some cards here, doesn't really matter. This just, you know, it's a permanent market store which provides a passive income of these things, but we can just produce them at home as well. What I wanna do here, I think, um, ah, that's a good question. What are we gonna do here? I think I will set up the market immediately here at the entrance, right? Uh, it seems right to me. I'm gonna put it up like this. How many would fit? Yeah, that is perfect. We will have 18 market stall locations. That is plenty. I think 18 is pretty close to what you can basically be doing, at least as far as I played. And with this market uh, space, it's already done. They are going to build their own market stalls and then, of course, supply the market stalls as well. We're going to put this at the very frontier of the town so that whoever enters can immediately start shopping. We are, and I'll tell you this outright, pretty, pretty fast when it comes to what we're doing here. <laughs> I love it. Left, right, left, right. We're pretty fast here entirely because I roughly know what I need to do to have a strong start. And look at them go. They're building up their very own market. So I'm so proud of you. Your entrepreneurial spirit is exactly why you are my serf. Ah, keep it up. And maybe one day you will be a lord as well. Obviously, that's that's not going to happen, okay? But I'm proud of you. Either way, uh, what are you selling? Is this the store where we can purchase... Is this foraging? Is this firewood? Let's take a look at this. What, what actually are you? You're a food stall. Okay, so they're gonna bring some food. They're gonna bring their very own berries. And you know what? I might just do like a middle cut in here. This will limit what the fields look like in this area. Not too unhappy about this, really. We're going to cut in here. Maybe make a little bit of a shortcut if you're going to the forager area. We might even do like a cut over there, but I think it's, it's a bit too much. I'm going to limit how many streets I put down without any meaning. Oh, and there is already the second stall. I got I to gotta check that out. Are they actually uniquely coded for what they're selling? I don't think so, right? This is just... These are gorgeous stalls, don't get me wrong here. But I don't think that either of them says exactly what they're selling. Maybe once their goods are actually present, right? Because currently... The families that built these stalls still need to bring the food and the wood itself. God, that is so cute. We can see here as well, by the way, that the forest is slowly but surely disappearing. Look at these birds. Oh my god. Never even noticed that. Uh, the forest is slowly but surely being pushed back. This will, of course, all become territory that we will use for farming. Uh, let me tell this guy, actually. Get rid of these trees. Get, get rid of these trees before anything else. Oh, and now bandits have stolen firewood. Hello. Uh, you live here? This is this is what you do? You come down here to steal my hard-earned stuff? Where's the next road? Because if I spawn any, I, I have to do it at a road. You know what? We're gonna spawn in here. We're gonna take a close look at these bandits real quick. They are just behind this forest. Bandits essentially exist, and they can be huge boons for you. Obviously, they're gonna steal your resources, but if you defeat them, and if you uh, basically take down their camp, you will make so much money off it. I'm serious. It is so, so beneficial to have bandits. Yeah, I can, I can see him over there. Look at that. These sons of guns. They can also come and assault us, which would be horrendous. But yeah, we gotta, we gotta take these down eventually. The time isn't here yet. But at some point, we will be stronger than them. Bandits were, of course, a big, big topic in this period. Um... Highly illegal. I mean, haha, <laughs> yes, stealing from others, killing others, highly illegal indeed. But this is something that would be an ever-arising threat. Even if you just had a period of poverty, a period of drought, if you had a criminal that was no longer welcome wherever they lived, uh, you may run into this as an issue, and you gotta tackle this. That is our quest as a lord. Look at him go. Both of you will die eventually, okay? So keep training. Because you'll need it, trust me. Oh, and there you go. Check that out. There's the berries. And there's the firewood. Oh, that is so lovely. So they do have a representation, but only if they're actually stocked. She does not seem happy. Maybe uh, maybe we gotta tax her a bit more. But we are progressing nicely. You can see we have our very first plots down there. We're expanding the plots, of course. And slowly but surely, this circle is gonna fill up. Like I said, this was a design created by the Germans in which Slavic populations would live. What isn't clear 
is whether the church was not a part of the center square here. Well, the center circle, I guess, because the Slavs living here were still pagan or whether that is the case, because normally these kind of villages would be built relatively low, very, very close to the sea levels, basically. And with that, you know, you can't really have a basement, you can't really have a graveyard for a church in that area. So instead the church would be outside of town and in an elevated position. We're gonna do exactly that as you go, but just look at that. God, I love this. And these, by the way, these buildings right here, oh my god, they have the longest backyard. Just look at this. Is that an outhouse over there? Wait a minute, okay, we got it. <laughs> now we actually have to go there. We are going directly, by the way, to the edge of the forest, which is roughly how that was done historically. We're going to build a couple of other village designs, of course, as well in the future. And most of the time, natural limitations was the big, big buzzword. What are you? Is this like, is this actually an outhouse? I think so. I don't think this is a shed. I, I think this is an outhouse. Very cute. Anyway, uh, yeah, this was the natural limitation. And they would push the backyard all the way back then. In some locations, of course, like I said, they would even actually have a, you know, a little bit of forest in their actual backyard so that they can have this as a personal firewood kind of uh, replenishing source. But that won't be the case here. The game just doesn't handle it that way. And that's perfectly fine. We even have a little piece of storage area right there. Gorgeous. In due time, we're going to build this stuff up. And we're going to have the best backyards. Trust me, okay? The, the most beautiful backyards. Let me try to go in here. No, okay, yeah. It, it doesn't work. Just just testing. Just testing. Oh, and there you go. We have increased our settlement level. You can check your settlement level right here if you hover over this. You can see how you get to the next one. Right now, we have built enough burgage plots to actually make this happen. We have become a small village. And next up is a medium village. Uh, we need two level two burgage plots. To get to level two, let me select this guy. This has now already been upgraded, which means there's an additional space for a family here. Beautiful. Uh, to get there, we need to give them church access and we need to give them some clothes. So that means we need some leather. Uh, we need a tannery, is essentially what I'm hearing. Now, whenever you level up, you also actually get a development point. You can see this right here. And these development points allow you to specialize your regions. So this is not you as, you know, a career or a character or as a lord. This is one particular region. And let me just double check this. Enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which give a passive income of meat. I like that, although we kind of care more for, uh, you know, I'm thinking about this. It's not currently helping us. But long term, I mean, this is the most fertile land of all of the lands. Long term, I think we want the points up here. Like I said, I do like this idea. Doubles capacity of all barrier deposits. That's great. Apiary is also a good idea. But you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and simply say I will pick up one of these whenever we start building, you know, either an, or an orchardry or a sheep breeding or, for example, just a normal field here. So that we can make this into our farming location. You can see right here we can't go into the deepest, deepest of it, but... We can pick up any of these and make this into the real farming plot. Yeah, okay, you know what? I'm not going to spend this point. We're going to spend it in due time. Once we level up enough, we can also pass some policies. They have upsides, they have downsides, and you can see uh, most of them are locked. So let's not get too concerned about that. Oh, and look here in August, the, the grass, the weeds are basically becoming a bit drier. It really does seem as though this is not the... You know, this is not the subtropical area here. Uh, yeah, we are already seeing the very first impact of this season. The winter, of course, will be incredibly intense. Man, eventually, I, I gotta put something up here. Just look at this cliffside. This is, this is beautiful. If I could put a monastery, not that that is a thing, as far as I understand it anyway. Not that I can, you know, if we could, I would put a monastery right there. Um, but for starters, yeah. We have a beautiful hillside right here. We gotta take advantage of that. Oh, and we've gotten a new message. What's this? Armament delivery. Oh, this is because we've just finished our storehouse. A strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived, and you will now be able to create your first militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need more weapons to equip all of the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. Ah, let's form the militia. And let me tell you, uh, having a militia, <laughs> very required. Very, very required. Are the bandits still here? God, I hate you guys. I hate your guts. We're not going to form a militia right now, but we have gotten free weapons from, you know, a friendly lord from the king. 
Obviously, there is some type of king, as there is the king's favor. And uh, yeah, this storehouse houses those now. With this storehouse, of course, we can now also expect to have shorter paths for, you know, where we need to be, what we can do. We're not going to actually do any type of farming in this very first year. My goal essentially was just to get things up. I hope that the storehouse very, very quickly can fill up with some... Uh, I can actually reshuffle this. I will assign somebody here and then take away one person from the logging camp. Because I need to store these pelts. They they get uh, they will get meat and pelts from there. And we want to store them here so that I can then start building up our industry. Let me take a look at this, right? If we go into the industry tab, we can see everything related to metal. We can see clay, malt house, and much more importantly for us, we can see a tannery. And I think that is exactly what I'm going to put down uh, roughly there. It's like, it's a very rural kind of building, right? Maybe I want to put it... I don't want to put it all the way over there. Long term, I, I don't even think we're going to bother hunting. I think we're just going to start importing that stuff. But that means that I will put the tannery, uh, you know, somewhere here in the rural area with the other relatively rural buildings. Let's just, you know what? I don't want to have it in the main crossing. I'm going to put it right here. I, I think it fits the storehouse quite well indeed. Look at that. There you go. And I think this is also where we are going to end this first video. Tomorrow's video will see us in winter. We'll see us survive the winter, hopefully, and then probably start up our very first attempts of both people immigrating into our location and maybe more importantly, people actually farming. Because my god, like I said, this territory we rolled very luckily will be perfect for a huge farming plot. Roughly like in this area, I think, right? That's where we're going to have this. But yeah, look at that. Other than that, we still have a big old piece of wood here in the center. I'm going to put a, a church, maybe on this hill over there. But it's all coming together now. We're seeing the very first houses going up, the first people moving in their families. And in just a few episodes, this entire area here will be surrounded by farmsteads. It will be glorious. Our Wundling is coming along very, very nicely. I'll leave you right here and let me know again where you think the church should go. We have a hill right there. We have a hill right there. We could put it even higher up, further away as well, but we could put it there. Not too uncommon with the Rundlinge. They would have a church somewhere in the vicinity rather than directly in the village. Uh, I'll leave you right here and I'll see you later, alligator.